welcome Kanika to the 100 women of impact. I must say, whenever I speak to you, I get super energized and super charged. Know you for more than what, 10 years now, Kanika? We Easily, yeah. <laughs> times. Uh, but, you know, I am so amazed with your journey. I must share with my audience over here. Kanika has an, you know, she has done an inspiring journey. I started Jet Set Go, which is one of the leading aviation company, which helps many people to actually get jet setting, as they say, from one place to the other. It is the only tech-led app which can help you to uh, book your private jets and actually, you know, make your flying easy. So Kanika, I'll just jump down to our um, questions and our discussion. I want to start with the fact that you have very varied educational background. You actually did visual communications, then you had done your economics and then an MBA and now you're in aviation industry. So I think, um, you know, Sarika, most of my education was done not by uh, choice or not by personal choice, but rather by what my parents wanted me to do, which is a very Indian cultural thing, I think. I can see that changing now, you know, when I ask the uh, management trainees in our company, why are you studying this? Why are you studying that? So they said, tell us because that's what they really wanted to do. But I think... Um, you know, in my case, personally, there were more choices uh, made because of the family background that I come from. We're a traditional Marwari business family, you know, where I wanted to become a pilot. And uh, my father said, uh, which literally means that our girls from our house don't work or rather they don't work for others. So he said, you know, choose a career where uh, you can work from home, where you can um, where your family, which you get married into, won't have issues. He, I don't have issues, but the family you get married into should not have issues. So I think it was more, like I said, by uh, not by choice, but by um, compulsion, if I can put it that way. And, um, you know, I, 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 I think I've become a f very firm believer in the fact that um, your life path really is, should, is never uh, coherent or never in, a dis in um, conjunction with what you study. This is so fantastic. And this just reminds me that it doesn't matter what you chose as an education background, but your aspirations and dreams are doesn't end there. It kind of continues post that. And, and also the fact that I hope the parents are also listening that, um, you know, let, you know, let their kids grow their own wings. My next question to you is like aviation space. Now that's a very, very different industry. Usually people become a pilot or people become a, you know, stewards or on the ground crew, you decided to start your own aviation company. So first tell me, how did this journey begin? First in the aviation industry and then later on to start your own company in the aviation industry. So, you know, I think, Sarika, again, I'm a big, um, I think I'm a firm, not believer, but I think I've learned over a period of time that um, it's a lot of your situations and your circumstances that drive decisions and drive where you are. You know, nothing in life actually happens by chance. So I actually got myself a job as a, um, you know, as a part-time uh, marketing team member in a very big corporate house where I was trying to uh, do visual communication design for them because that's what I was studying at that time also. So I was replicating ads, which the agency would make at lower costs and do all sorts of stuff, which is what I think, um, you know, that was a, an opening that I probably was given by God or something because one fine day I walked into the chairman's office to discuss the ads by chance again. I was this wild, pink-haired, uh, hippie-looking, you know, creature, nothing of what you see today. And uh, there was a replica of a building, a small scale-down model of a real estate project that they were building. And uh, you know, there was a helipad on that. And I said, this helipad is never going to work, which is what probably, um, you know, triggered the chairman's interest. The next day he called me. And um, he asked me that, do I want to start the, be a part of the aviation company that they're starting, which is going to be buying a few private jets to cater to their own services. Um, so I learned everything on the job. And I think um, you know, that finally led to me uh, also working in the UK while doing my MBA. And then I came back and I was diagnosed with cancer. And after I recovered, basically what happened was uh, no one would give me a job. My parents wanted me to sit at home and recover. And uh, for me, it was a matter of survival. If I had to sat, sit, if I sat at home and did nothing for one more year, I would have gone crazy. So I said, okay, no one's giving me a job and I don't have, no, I don't want to sit at home. So what do I do? I want to start a business of my own. And I think it was more to do with pride, more to do with self-esteem, you know, respect, being able to believe in my own dreams, being able to believe in my own capabilities that drove me to do this. And I think what the biggest plus was, you know, at that age and at that time, you have such little to lose. The worst that would happen, the worst that would happen was I would have to go back home and live with my parents. And that's what I was really, really scared of. So I think a lot of decisions were really driven by um, 
you know fear which in some in some cases i say is always good also and i always believe that fear is not bad for the simple reason fear is these um, if you acknowledge your fears and if you face them you're at least driven to take decisions where you can drive out the things that um, scare you and that's how i ended up starting this in bollywood no it's fantastic and i would always say do not operate from a space of fear but make fear your friend yes. so you are getting yes. exactly. you yeah. you get into action mode um talking about cancer you spoke about it at such a young age it must have been really devastating how did you deal with it because health and career aspirations and parental pressures of doing certain things in a certain way all three coming together how did you deal with it So, you know, I think, um, Sarika, I always say cancer is my best. Cancer was the best thing that happened to me. And, you know, again, had I been this age when I got cancer, I don't think I would have taken it as well as I did at that time. I was 21 again, very young. I didn't even know what cancer was. You know, I remember getting the report in my hand on the first day of the diagnosis from the doctor and Googling it. Where it um, and on Google, it said that um, so-and-so disease is another form of cancer. And I looked around and I was like, what is cancer? Then I Googled, what is cancer? And I was that stupid. But I think... Um, you know what happened for me was um i saw my parents age almost 10 years on the first day of my diagnosis and my number one goal became that i had to fight this myself i don't know where you i think um, again you know when you're faced with certain challenges or um, you know i would say uh, certain uh, hurdles that you have to go through in life you have to find that innate strength in yourself to uh, to fight it and you know i i don't know whether i found the innate strength or whether i had the innate strength or where it came from but i just knew in my head that this was you know my battle and i had to fight it independently you know if i look back i'm so glad i got cancer it it gave me this um, you know conviction to believe in myself to believe in my own capability it taught me how important your uh, mind is you know it's your thoughts become things your thoughts things become actions so if you think positive if you believe in yourself if you believe in your dreams you believe in your goals there's absolutely nothing in the world that can stop you from um, achieving them ultimately you know it's uh, only you who can be your biggest motivator your biggest encourager your biggest supporter if you don't believe in yourself there's absolutely no one in the world who's going to believe in you believing in yourself with that strong message i'll ask my next question is that i have always heard that aviation i mean whenever i look at aviation industry i find it very difficult to understand why do people do aviation because most of the airlines across the globe are actually loss making companies there are very few profit making companies and um, i have also heard that when you do decide um, on aviation industry to make not only profits but to also the starting point of um, starting this business is very daunting because it requires a lot of funding there is a lot of regulatory um, aspects to be taken care of can you share a bit more about that journey you know crossing those hurdles of the initial days how did you go through this because it's an industry which is the, the toughest one to survive and to thrive so you know i think um, so there is a common saying in our industry if you're a billionaire and you want to become a millionaire start an airline <laughs> from a millionaire I, I to become... and this is this is my investment banking head at <laughs> always saying why i always ask this question why i mean as soon as i come to know somebody is starting an airline my first instinct is okay he is like going to mill away a lot of money and ultimately it's not going to give any profits that my initial sense i always get and therefore this question why and how So I think my Marwadi brain cannot work without uh, you know having something profitable. We were a strategy meeting uh, two hours back, and my team came back to me saying we're going to be minus a bit on this, minus a bit on this, minus a bit on this. And I said, are you crazy? To shut down the company and get lost because we've always been a bit of positive net profit. Where the hell did this um, happen? However, uh, you know that being said, I think this is an industry of uh, complete unknowns. This is an industry where. Um, you know there are so many factors that are completely beyond your control the weather goes bad your customer calls you and says i my plane can't take off i'm going to miss my meeting because of you i'm not the weather god you know i'm not controlling whether this fog in delhi or smog in delhi or whether it's uh, too uh, windy or too rainy to take off so you know there's tons of factors unfortunately of uh, in this industry where you which you really can't control especially given the indian landscape and the indian geographical as well as regulatory environment it is the one of the most complicated industries um you know to actually be able to forget excel i would say even survive and i think um, you know that's what probably drives me more to keep going because um and if i was selling toothpicks i'd probably be making a lot more money but uh, i mean there would be no reason to really get up in the morning and fight a war 
सिक्स ईयर्स ए गो वेन अ प्लेन गॉट स्पॉइल्ड आई वुड बी यू नो इन बेड क्राइंग सींग ओ माई गॉड ये क्या हो गया वाई इज अब वट डू आई डू दिस कस्टमर इज गोट बी सो अपसेट दिस इज गोट हैपन दैट इज गोट हैपन यू नो नाउ वेन अ प्लेन गेट स्पॉइल आई वोट इवन कम टू नो बिकॉज माई टीम हैंडल इट वीव लर्न फ्रॉम आई मिस्टेक्स नॉट मिस्टेक्स वाई वीव लर्न फ्रॉम सिचुएशन and and we've learned how to handle them so i think you know my biggest learning from working in one of the most challenging industries has been the only way to make something unpredictable predictable is to you know over a period of time understand all the things that can go wrong and come up with strategies to make sure you can they can be addressed in the future you know um, that's one that's one very very important lesson i've learned in trying to survive this cycle the other point the other thing which i think is very crucial to making yourself um, sustainable in this industry i would say is that you've got to treat uh, people in a very different manner you know this is an industry that's driven by human nature by human reactions today if you have an angry pilot on a plane you're putting the risk of all the passengers behind him as well as co-pilot in the cabin crew at stake so you've got to treat people with a lot of respect very differently and put your team before anything else any um, people human centric industry you've got to put people first if you take care of your people they'll do everything in the world to make sure you succeed but at the same time if you're not going to you know give your people i'm not saying pay over pay them or you know um, expect them to not do work and still get paid etc i'm just saying treat people like people and i think um, you know give them the respect they want give them the acknowledgement that they want praise uh, give them that give them what's due to them and there's again there's no reason why you want to succeed um, also sharing about the first idea germinating of jetset go how did that germinate was it because your experience in the aviation industry while we were working as an intern or was it because you wanted to do this because you must have done a hazar prayatna mm-hmm. as i say na you must have really tried hard to convince your stakeholders your parents everybody around you that you want to be part of this industry how did that i think uh, you know for me the it's so funny you ask me this right now i was just uh, sitting with jonathan who used to be my boss in the uk um 13 years ago he was my managing director in the company we work with and he's now joined us as chief strategy officer over here in india and uh, we were just discussing this so it was actually jonathan and i who were working on something not similar but uh, i would say which was doing 20% of what we do today and that's when the seed actually struck that you know if it why can't i do this in india why can't i change the way it works in india so yeah that's why i started are there any skills and competencies that you have learned on the fly pun intended uh, while building this organization and any two bits of advice to the young entrepreneurs out there i think so many you know I, every day as sarika is a big learning experience and um, you know every day i think i i'm growing as a human being i'm learning new things and i think one of the biggest skills that i've um, i don't know if it's a skill or a, i don't know what it is but i think i've just learned to be so much more patient and um, i think that's something very very important in uh, you know for any entrepreneur i was someone who wanted everything done yesterday i used to think everyone can work in the way i do everyone can work in the speed i do it took me a very long time to realize and understand that not everyone's built the same you know my mother would whenever i snap at the driver my mother would always tell me he if he was as smart as you he wouldn't be your driver and i just wouldn't understand that and you know that's something i've understood today and acknowledged so um i think that's that's something i've really learned thanks to um, get and go i think the other biggest uh, you know quality or value that i have um, picked up running this um, you know company is on how to keep yourself um, growing every day how to keep yourself mentally stimulated and i think that's something i've still not learned fully but it's something i'm still trying to um, master you know when you're a young leader i think you stop absorbing things you know you're so caught up in your day to day life of day to day world of trying to run things do things right that you forget what's you know you said you forget uh, how to keep yourself um, up to speed with what's going around in the world what's going to change how how how's the world moving forward etc fantastic thank you so much and that's a wrap kanika every time i discuss you know talk with you i discuss your journey i hear about your what you're doing it always inspires me so much thank you so much thank for spending your time you. and looking forward to seeing how your journey your journey continues and thrives and you you inspire many others thanks thank a lot thank you so much